work. Why isn't it working? Hmm. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. All right, there we go. All right, so we started this project, this planning study, back with, um, and if you remember, this was a DCED planning grant that we received from the state, um, with, and we used matching funds to help fund the study. So we started this back in, I believe, May of last year. We held several public meeting or stakeholder workshops, public meetings. We even did a couple of online surveys. Um, the you know with the vision that you know downtown Hazleton will be once again a vibrant, safe place to live, work, and visit. And so you know we we held an open house. We had comments that people. Um, provide it to us uh, both in person and online, try to get a sense of what it is that everybody wanted to um, see as part of this revitalization plan. Um, the study area, just so you know, um, you know, we, we focused on the downtown, but we included and looked at demographic data within a 10-mile radius. Um, we looked at uh, businesses. We looked at, we did a business and building inventory. We did um, and this is our core study area. Um, and as you can see, we, like I said, we looked at businesses, buildings, um, uh, retail establishments, vacancy, parking, uh, and, um, and opportunities for, for infill. So, you know, the downtown business dis district has about 1,900 jobs uh, in about 230 businesses. And that's just within that core area. If you go just a little bit outside it and you include the hospital and the shopping centers, you know, that brings the statistics up to about 3,500 jobs, which is about 40% of the jobs in the city. So, you know, for that reason, the downtown, of course, as you all know, but it helps reinforce the fact that this is the center for economic, uh, you know, growth and, and development here in the city. Uh, we looked at, as I said, um, building stock, you know, historic value of the buildings. We looked at, you know, fa facade conditions, you know, wh which ones are in need of repair, which ones are good. Redevelopment potential um, for use uh, for new new uses or or um, you know different uh, you know new occupancy uh, and we also as I mentioned looked at uh, you know vacant statistics uh, for buildings as well as vacant lots and parking that's already available within the downtown. Uh, with that um, and with all our public meetings and focus groups and so forth, we we came up with several goals um, and each set of goals is basically in line with the, um, the framework for downtown revitalization that's used throughout the country. It's called the Main Street Model. And so this, um, you know, it, it's broken down into economic restructuring, uh, organization design, marketing and promotions, and uh, safety and cleanliness. So those, those are the set of strategies that we were looking at. Um, so you could read, you know, each of the goals there, they're in your packet, I won't go into detail. Um, but this is what we decided on through our, our you know, our, our meetings and planning groups. Um, with this, we also, of course, um, one of the, one of the uh, key components of economic development uh, goals is to build on what's already uh, started, what, what momentum is already existing within the downtown. Of course, the Traders Bank building is under construction. You know, the, the bridges are under construction, the parking garage is under renovation, the HNB bank building is in design phase right now for renovation, um, and that, you know, the architectural plans are being developed for that. Um, the Hayden Tower, of course, is almost 90% occupied, or over 90% occupied, it has 35 small businesses. So these are the types of, um, uh, you know, projects that we want to um, build upon. You know, in the Markle building, it's, it's recently off the KOZ, now contributing just in real estate taxes alone over, you know, about 180000 a year. Of course, the Broad Street Corridor project is completed, and so all of these things are factored into what we developed um, and are calling the priority improvement area. So that's the core area outlined in red. So that considers all the projects that have been either that are under renovation right now or have recently been... Uh, renovate it. It includes um, the core group of buildings that are, have rehabilitation potential, have historic value, and, and are close to parking. So that's our priority improvement area. The, the, colored, um, the colored properties that you see 
right in the center there, the blue, the greens, those are the priority improvement projects that we are targeting um, for early implementation, and I'll go through those very quickly. Of course, as you know, we purchased, the, we being the Downtown Alliance, purchased the Security Savings Bank building uh, from the county last, late last year. We closed on that in December. Um, and as has been well publicized, you know, our goal is to turn that into a city arts center, a cultural venue for art and, and civic performances and, and that. And the, the Art League is already committed to moving um, their programs there. Um, Can Do has purchased, sorry, um, Can Do has purchased the Remember When building uh, late last fall, and we want to work with them to um, establish a kitchen incubator uh, in that location. That is a facility that's a commercially licensed kitchen that is available to rent um, by food, uh, small base food business entrepreneurs that want to start up a, their own business. We found many. Um, businesses or entrepreneurs that want to start a restaurant or a food-based business downtown and the costs are just so prohibitive and the code requirements um, to open a restaurant uh, it just costs a, a lot of money between the equipment and all the requirements so anyway this would be one way to help um, business startups downtown and can be would actually manage that um, in partnership with a lot of the um, educational institutions um, one of the other things that, as we've developed the Second Fridays, um, you know, marketing and, and promotions uh, and events for the downtown, we find that there is a lack of space for outdoor um, social gatherings, for performances, for um, people to gather, for festivals, even the farmer's market, you know, it's better than, the sidewalk is better than being in a parking lot, but still, um, it's, on, it's on the sidewalk, and so, um, one of the key recommendations of the plan, as you know, is to develop um, a city park uh, on the property on the corner of Braun and Laurel. And that would provide this venue for civic events, performances, um, children's activities, and, and, and you know, people, people to congregate and watch um, these different uh, performances. Um, we're also working with um, Luzern, with the existing educational institutions as well as Penn State. Um, Penn State has an interest in having a downtown location. They've identified the HMB Bank building in the lobby there for a new um, educational center. And so they are actually in negotiations right now um, trying to develop, you know, work with the, the building owner and the architects to, to see how that could come to fruition. We feel that having more students downtown, you'll see through the comments that we received throughout the planning study, you know, having young people downtown, having more educational facilities, more um, opportunities for, um, for entrepreneurship education, and, and just having a presence of, of young people, like I said, in the downtown is really important. Uh, we're also targeting, as I said, the block between Laurel and, and, and Wyoming. As you know, there's many vacant buildings on that block. Um, it's really not only an eyesore, but um, you know, it's just a dead, dead space, and with all these redevelopment projects going around, on around it, we're, we're really trying to focus on improvements to that block. Um, we did a market study, or the consultants that we hired did a um, market study for both retail and housing. Um, as far as retail is concerned, um, they found that the types of businesses that have market demand, that is, that could be supported within the downtown, um, are just different types of specialty food services, restaurants, cafes, brew pubs, specialty clothing, stores, specialty retail, um, you know, bookstores, home furnishings, and that sort of thing. Things that are out of the ordinary that people will come to the downtown that they can't find in, in other places. So that's um, one thing that we'll be working on, and we're also, you know, of course, looking to retain existing businesses, recruit new ones, and um, try to try to get the, the designations that we need to um, uh, get the tax incentive programs that will create the financial incentives for, for businesses to locate downtown. Um, you know, and why is this important? I won't go through this in detail, but the more businesses you co-locate, the more people spend money um, in that location. So, you know, People who work downtown will be more likely to go to the local drugstore or the clothing store or grocery store to pick up their daily, you know, their daily or, or weekly shopping needs. And so 
you know, the more, more those businesses could be clustered, the better it is for the local economy. Um, we're also working right now to develop a, a database of available property that's both for sale and rent. Um, so we're not just focused right on that block, but the whole downtown core um, to try to find uh, and make it easier for people to find space to rent if they want to open up a business downtown or buy, buy um, property. Right now there's a 12% vacancy rate uh, within the core, um, and you can see the statistics there for retail and commercial and residential. If all of those were occupied, which is unlikely of course, but just for comparison purposes, if all of those properties were occupied um, according to their use, it, it's estimated to be a potential tax revenue of over $880,000 per year, um, and that's a mercantile tax, um, uh, um, uh, EIT tax, and, and that's not even including the property taxes that would increase the, through the increase in assessed value through property improvements. So that's an, you know one of the things that we're really looking at in terms of um, economic potential growth. Um, housing uh, is another thing that we looked at. Um, our consultant, consultants found that the market could support about 165 uh, market rate um, apartments uh, downtown, or not just downtown, but within the city, uh, but the city as a whole. And so, you know, there's opportunities for, for, for renovation of existing buildings. Um, certainly the Altamont is a core, I mean, a key uh, uh, target for that, and we hope to see what we can do to, to, to help that move forward. Um, okay, parking obviously is a big issue. Um, our recommendation in the planning study anyway is to establish a parking advisory committee to comprehensively really examine what the parking needs are downtown, not just speculate, but really, um, you know, based on good analysis and projected demand from new uses that are either coming online or, or will soon in the future, um, understand, you know, what are the needs and, you know, just on the information that's provided so far, you know, there's already a net um, number of 277 spaces available. That's just city-owned parking lots. Um, and then if you add the additional demand that's going to be generated by, you know, the, the, the occupancy of the Traders Bank and the HNB Bank, those projects that we know are going to come online, um, you know, you, you still have a surplus. So, uh, you know, the thing that we're, we're really trying to stress is to look at this in a way that could look at shared parking, um, opportunities for shared parking with existing um, private lots that have spaces that they might want to lease. But the key to that will be management and how, you know, and, and how is that revenue collected and shared. You know, so those are things that hopefully a parking advisory committee can. Kristen, when was the last parking study that was done, or have you guys done anything? Um, well, the Alfred Benish did a parking uh, count. Um, I think it was in August or April of last year. It was last year, 2014. Um, and that was to determine the availability of parking um, as the renovations for the parking garage were um, getting ready to start. So he, the, the number of counts that were done were just for parking uh, facilities owned by the lots owned and the structure owned by the city, or at that time, the, the, the authority. And then, of course, if new parking uh, structures do need to be developed, you know, the, the North uh, Wyoming Street lot would be a uh, key target for that, and the consultants even provided, a, you know, a, um, a, a picture of what that could look like. Um, other things that are important are, you know, improving pedestrian connections between existing parking lots, such as the one on Chestnut Street behind, like, the Felons and Senior Center area there. Um, with Broad Street, and so they've come up with some ideas, you know, where those strategies could be implemented and, and have real results. I should say that the park um, project proposed for the corner of Laurel and, uh, and Broad Street is a really important pedestrian connector that will serve to, to link the parking, the North Wyoming parking lot with pedestrian access to Broad Street and especially the HMB Bank building and the needs that it will have. And so, because that will be the primary parking lot for that building as it comes and uh, fills up. You know, marketing and promotion goals are important as well. Trying to, f you know, create a full special events calendar, um, develop a unique brand for the downtown. The brand, of course, is damaged. 
uh, as you all know, I'll go back here for a second, um, you know, we want to really work with the media to generate positive media coverage and, um, and really, you know, elevate the image of, of the downtown um, and get away from, you know, the, the, the negative image that it has right now. Just to come back to the slide very quickly, you'll see that there's two districts um, that we're looking to um, work on branding. One is the Wyoming Street Historic Business District, which is, um, you know, this, this really strong, um, uh, strong heritage of small mom and pop businesses of mixed ethnicity. It's always been a, an immigrant um, business district, and, and, that, and that really continues today with a lot of the Latino businesses that are um, occupying that space. And so that is something that, you know, we're looking to, to brand in a positive way. And then also, as these new projects come online, you know, the Arts Center, the, um, the, um, the educational uh, expansions and, and so forth, the, the core of the downtown could then perhaps be branded as an arts and innovation education district because it does have a lot of existing resources there already. Um, you know, the Pennsylvania Theater for Performing Arts, the churches, the library, and so forth. And so this would be a way to kind of reinforce that and, and brand it in a positive way. Here's just, if you haven't seen it already, a slide of Wyoming Street now and what, you know, the, our consultants came up with an idea for, you know, branding as a multicultural business district. Um, of course, also working with the existing businesses, trying to promote them, as well as um, cross-marketing uh, between the traditional Anglo businesses and the new Hispanic businesses. Um, our goal is also to build recognition of the heritage um, and promote the, the history and heritage of the downtown, um, working with the Historical Society and other partners. You know, they did a historical, tour, you know, walking tour this past summer that was really well attended. People are interested in the history, and, and so there is potential to grow that as a, as a business. Um, you know, the, there was talk about also building, a, or not building, but establishing some sort of official visitor center, um, coordinating tourism materials, better signage throughout the downtown, working with existing tourism agencies. Um, design goals, I'll just go through these very quickly. One thing that, you know, you all should have seen is the improvements that uh, we're funding through a grant to uh, 13 East Broad, which is the building right next to the Dragonfly. You could see the siding um, as it was coming off last year. We, we worked with the property owner, the church, to, uh, to help them with the re re uh, rehabilitation design. You could see the lower left picture was what it used to look like in the 1920s and what it looked like as the siding came off. They didn't even know they had windows. And so we worked with them on the uh, renovation project. And if you've seen it lately, it's not complete yet, but it is a drastic improvement. And it will be one of many we hope to implement over the next few years. Um, one of the other con key recommendations that the consultants felt were really important, um, and this came through with our planning studies as well, is that the Harmon Geist Stadium is an underutilized resource, and they felt that you know, this should be a, a key um, a venue for, for sporting events, you know, not only for the school district, but perhaps for the community, and they recommended that um, you know, a new park or promenade green, open green space could be developed there as well. What? How did that happen? Okay, they also uh, made a recommendation for a community, you know, repurposing vacant lots through the uh, establishment of community gardens, working with property owners to, to implement that, as well as a mural program um, on a lot of, um, this is a popular um, public art program throughout communities all over the country, and people really seem to like this idea in, at least through the surveys that we received back online. And why is this all important in terms of the design and the aesthetics of the downtown? Um, because of the, the number of vehicles that pass through, you know, just on a, on a daily basis, you know, there's 24,000 vehicles per day that pass through the downtown. Um, if only 1% one, 1 of them were to stop um, and spend $10 buying, you know, a sandwich or a cup of coffee, you know, that's over or about $876,000 that's in, infused into the local economy each year. So that's why we feel it's important. Placemaking goals, just very quickly. Um, you know, this is where we, we really hope to work with the city um, and other partner organizations, you know, maybe to, uh, to work on deterring crime, improving cleanliness within the downtown. We've already discussed um, and had meetings with um, the chief and with other 
partners like Lackawanna Police Academy and the um, Keystone uh, Job Corps security program and the possibility of establishing a safe and clean, um, I mean, a, a volunteer ambassador program uh, where people would walk around downtown to be the eyes and ears on the street. Um, so, you know, there's a lot to do yet, a lot of exploration, feasibility, trying to understand what's possible based on, you know, what volunteers are capable of doing. Um, and that's something that we hope to continue as we move along. And then also working with this, you know, maybe re reinvigorating the City's Blighted Properties Committee, working with the Redevelopment Authority and the Code Office to target properties for, for action, for, you know, citing them, for acquiring them, for demolishing whatever sale, um, moving, you know, moving forward to, to improve blighted properties. Um, also, um, CPTED stands for Crime Prevention Through Environmental Design, and so, you know, there's plenty of um, small things that property owners can do to uh, improve the safety and security of their own properties to deter crime, and so we, we're working with the Keystone Job Corps um, to, to help understand what those could be, and of course, working with the Planning and Zoning Commissions um, in any way we can to help implement, um, you know, these, these, these types of recommendations. And I won't go into our organization and fundraising goals because these are just for our own, um, our own, you know, organization. But one thing that is really important is that we are uh, trying to become a certified Main Street community, and that's a certification that's given by the state. Um, and in order to do that, we need to finalize our strategic plan, which is our next step. Right now, it's it's the draft is still being compiled. Kristen, what, what will that allow us to do when we're Main Street? If we're a Main Street community, you would, if you say, so if you, you would have to adopt this plan through resolution to say that this is the plan that the city agrees and adopts as part of their own. Um, and you would give the Downtown Hazleton Alliance for progress in that resolution, I guess, um, the, uh, not, not the authority, but the responsibility of overseeing the Main Street program. The Main Street program, as I said, is, it's highly structured and um, run by the Pennsylvania Downtown Center, which is an affiliate of the, a subset of the DCED. And that requires monthly re or quarterly reporting um, for, you know, all these types of statistics, you know, job growth, um, building improvements, um, physical improvements to buildings, all these types of statistics that we just went through. This is all baseline data. So with the idea that it w if and when we become a Main Street community, that's reported on a quarterly basis. And those statistics are used statewide to help the um, DCED understand how this program is functioning and working. Um, by finalizing the strategic plan, it also gives us the strategies that, you know, we know we need to implement Pittston to move Main forward. Pittston, uh, Every, well, there's, I mean, I don't, I think Pittston is a Main Street, designated Main Street community. Um, you have to have the manager, every Main Street program needs to have a manager. So, you know, the executive director <coughs> typically serves as the manager of, of each Main Street community. They have to go, we, I would have to attend training. Um, my board would have to attend training. Um, so it's, it's a highly structured... Um, Open up more grants and funding yes. from... Yes, yes, it does. In fact, if we're a Main Street community that allows us to apply for tax credit, um, management of tax credit programs, enterprise zone tax credits, um, grants for, say, facade, uh, or anchor building improvements, um, a whole bunch of, you know, opportunities come along with that Main Street designation. But in order to do that, you have to be accredited, and yeah. that's how they, yeah. through that reporting, is how they, they make sure that you're meeting the standards for the state. Um, and so, you know, that's our next, that's our next step. So we'll finalize the strategic plan, get, once we have it finalized, we'll get you a copy. Um, and with that will come a resolution, I guess, a draft resolution to ask you to adopt the plan. And then we'll file for, for Main Street designation and start trying. We're already trying to start the, you know, implementing these projects, of course, um, as funding opportunities have come available. We've applied for them. So as you know, because I've been up here <laughs> asking for um, approval for that and, and just to continue our own fundraising, which is, is really for our operational, operational costs and um, cash flow so that we can use that money as a match for some of these other grants that we'll be applying for. And that's all I have. I'm sorry I took so long. Okay, any questions? Just, uh, 
is probably more a suggestion as well. I know that you've done an awful lot of work on this, and and I know may may want to slide it. Uh, but there's a well, it's a paper that I just completed, um, and one of the areas that was very similar to ours that you may want to also take a look at for some of the projects that you've mentioned here. Uh, Holyoke, Massachusetts. I know it sounds an awful lot different. Not Mount Holyoke, no, just mm -hmm. Holyoke, Massachusetts. Um, very much the same in immigration, very much the same. They were a pa they were paper industry uh, capital for a long time in the United States, where we were the coal capital. Uh, but highly unionized after a while, slid down in the 1930s and 40s, uh, having run into their problems. And they're now trying to revitalize themselves as well. Also, um, a tremendous uh, resurgence of immigration into the city. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, with some of your, uh, the murals, with mm -hmm. uh, redeveloping sections of the town and all that, I'd suggest maybe you want to take a look at Holyoke a little bit too. Okay, I can Absolutely. get you some information for contact. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, if you need to. Is there any other questions? Any other questions? Thank you, Kristen. Thank you. And thank if there's, you. I should say too, if there's any, as you go through the information that I provided you, if there's anything that you feel, you, you know, needs further uh, analysis or elaboration, just let me know. You know, I don't want to finalize the plan, you know, have the plan finalized and then, you know, have you all review it and decide later that, you know, there's, I wish I would have, you know, added this, so. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.